All right, there are only five end games for your breakup, for you and your ex. In this video, we're going to be going over what those five end games are, and more importantly, how you can set yourself up to get the outcome that you particularly want with all of this. Because of course, this is not just a passive thing. It's not as if you just say, okay, there is a certain probability that this could happen, therefore let me just cross my fingers and blindly hope. No, you of course are an active participant in your life and the things that you do then the choices that you make are going to influence what happens to you i should not have to explain this but there are people out there with a fixed mindset that do not seem to think this way for some reason anyway but with that being said let's go ahead and get right on into this hey there it's clay with modern love dot life so again you and your ex, there are a few different outcomes that can happen as the result of your breakup, five to be exact. The first one is that you may very well go on to become bitter and cynical and jaded towards love or relationships or men or women or whatever. This is sad to see nonetheless, but people do come to this sort of conclusion. You know, they may in some way want to make the relationship work, but they feel unable to do that for some reason. They feel as if love is inaccessible to them for some reason. They make broad generalizations about men or women or relationships or love or marriage or something like that. And they then carry that forward. You know, you may occasionally see people like this in the comments section of videos or on uh, online forums and Facebook groups, etc., that say things like, you know, women only want one thing, men only want one thing, you know, a wedding ring is the world's smallest handcuff, or, you know, something like that. And of course, this can be true, obviously, if you are with the wrong person. If you are with a malignant narcissist, for example, yes, you are probably not going to have an excellent marriage. Yes, you may feel as if you are handcuffed to that person and that love is not going to work out for you. But this, of course, is not a globalized general statement. There are millions of people out there who are in great relationships, who are happily married, who are enjoying life together. I consider myself to be one of them, so th there, there you go. This is not what I want for you. This is not what I want you to experience. I don't think this is what you want either. Many times these jaded and cynical people believe that they are empowered because they have, I don't know, taken the red pill or something like that, and they think that they can see the truth about life or something. I, I mean, I don't know. Yes, there are certain things that may be against you, like at least here in the United States. Um, yeah, you know, divorce court does heavily favor women, and men often do get the short end of the stick. Does that mean that love is worthless and not worth trying? In my opinion, it's not worth it to have that opinion. Love is worth it, but it's not worth it to have this sort of jaded and cynical opinion on life. I don't want you to end up this way because this is a very sad way to go about living your life. This is a very sad way to go about uh, experiencing the world around you. You know, there are so many people out there. I talk to them on a nearly daily basis. There are many men out there who want to have a genuine loving relationship. There are many women out there who want to have a genuine loving relationship. If you manage to somehow find the wrong person, I am sorry that that happened to you, but please do not make these global statements about men or women or love or relationships or marriage or anything like that, because you can have what you're all looking for. I can promise you that, but you may not be able to find it with the person that you specifically want want or specifically have in mind. Of course, that's not to say that you cannot save your relationship because again, you can do this. And many times, you know, if you go back and look at people who have been in great relationships and married for, you know, decades, you will often find that their marriage or relationship did have a sort of a certain struggling point in the past that they had to work together to overcome. This, of course, is one of the five outcomes. By the way, if you are liking this video, please make sure that you hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and, you know, dro drop a comment down below. Do you find yourself being pulled towards jaded cynicism, bitterness, or something like that? If so, do you find this empowering? Do you find this more of a quiet, whimpering defeat? What is your experience on all of this? I'd love to know in the comment section. The second possible outcome in all of this is that you may not get back together with your ex and that you may sort of reluctantly go out into the dating and relationship world and sort of struggle to get through that. Maybe you're not able to get the kind of partner that you want 
online. Maybe you feel as if you are having a hard time, you know, swiping on apps, going on first dates that never seem to go anywhere, meeting people that you just don't have a meaningful connection with that just leave you disappointed. Uh, maybe thinking back to a previous relationship, thinking back to your ex or something like that. But you may eventually end up getting into a relationship and settling down with someone who, you know, maybe isn't your first choice, but there they are. You know, you've somehow uh, dropped your expectations to the point where you're like, okay, I don't want to end up bitter, cynical, and alone, so let me just drop my expectations a little bit and end up in some kind of relationship with someone who seems reasonably good enough. Now, this is also not the outcome that I want for for you either because I want you to be alive and happy and excited about the relationship that you end up being in. And I don't want you to feel as if you need to settle. Now, obviously, if you have some kind of, you know, ridiculous expectation, like I need to be in a relationship with a billionaire who, you know, uh, always wants to connect with me and, you know, bends over backwards to do my bidding or something like that. Uh, okay, we might have to have a little bit of a conversation about realistic expectations. But most of the people that I talk to, you know, they just want to have someone that they can, you know, do life with, someone that they can enjoy small moments together with, whether it's cooking dinner or doing family events or something like that, or whether it's, you know, living out some sort of big life things, traveling the world, seeing each other together. They just want to have a meaningful connection and be able to share these experiences with somebody. And I think as long as you're your goals are somewhat along that train of thought, you're probably doing okay and you don't need to worry about adjusting your expectations down. Again, people may feel drawn towards people that aren't a good fit for them for whatever reason, but if you just learn how to find the right person to fit into what you want, then, um, you know, hey, you can have an amazing relationship without settling at all. The third outcome here is that you, you know, you and your ex may end up getting back together, but you may not have corrected the actual root problem that resulted in the breakup in the first place, and you may end up having a relationship that struggles or even ends up in a second echo breakup. Now, this is unfortunate, but this is what a lot of people can experience if they don't actually address the root cause, the real reason why the breakup happened. You know, if they're just looking for, what do I text to my ex in order to make them want to come back to me? What do I say in order to change their mind? But they haven't looked at making a fundamental meaningful change in terms of the dynamic. And of course, I'm not trying to blame you entirely for the breakup. Sure, take responsibility for what you need to. But I think that there is often a misconception that oftentimes a lot of people going through breakups who want to save their relationship, they take on too much blame themselves. And they say, okay, hey, you know, I I, I messed up. My, align my priorities were out of alignment. I screwed up. I need to, you know, self-flagellate myself and all that sort of stuff. Yes, take responsibility for what you may have done wrong. But, you know, it takes two people to make a certain relationship dynamic, and I'm certain that you should not be bearing 100% of the responsibility. There's probably a reasonable, maybe even 50% responsibility that your partner should be bearing as well too. You need to look at this dynamic and how it has been playing out for you, but basically I think that um, if you haven't corrected the root cause of the breakup, not just with you, but with the dynamic as in terms of how both of you work together, then you may very well find yourself in a an echo breakup or any repeat breakup that can just make things more difficult in the long run. Now, I don't want you to be in this situation as well, too, because you may experience the sugar high of getting back together. But if you're still having problems in your relationship, then that is obviously not desirable. And this is not an outcome that I want for you. So we've gone over three outcomes that I don't want for you. But the last two are outcomes that I do want for you. The fourth one, the, the first one that I do want for you is that you and your partner don't get back together, but you are able to learn from this experience, you're able to grow and you're able to go back out into the dating world and to find somebody who is aligned with what you want. You're able to go out there and meet someone and say, wow, this is so much better than what I could have had or this is, this is um, you know, equal or better to what I could have had with somebody else. I know that you may not feel this way right now if you're going through a breakup and you're thinking, oh, it wasn't my past relationship perfect, wasn't my uh, past partner, like, you know, everything that I wanted. But 
I can promise you that when you find the right person, you will not think of your ex as the one that got away. You will not think of them uh, uh, and say, gosh, you know, I just wish I could have been with them instead of this other person. Again, that is <laughs> one of the other outcomes that we talked about already. You can find somebody who is 100% perfectly aligned with what you want in a partner, what you want in a life, what you want in a relationship, and all that sort of stuff. You can do this. I can promise you that, again, unless your expectations are just completely unrealistic. The fifth outcome is that you and your ex can get back together and you can go on to have a great, amazing relationship. And this happens much more commonly than you might think. Because, you know, again, if you talk to most people who have been in a great, thriving, successful relationship that's lasted any significant period of time, you'll probably hear that, yeah, you know, there was probably some sort of rough patch where we weren't sure if we were going to make it or we may have split up for a while and gotten back together or something. But these couples learn how to grow through their challenges. They learn how to learn something from this experience and correct the root cause and say, okay, yeah, there were solvable problems in our relationship. Maybe we just had our priorities out of whack, or maybe we were just not communicating the right way or something like that. But we were both able to grow and learn from that and to create a new outcome that would work for both of us. And really, that is um, another thing that obviously I would be absolutely thrilled if you told me that was your outcome. What I want to do is I want to get you into a great, amazing relationship, whether that is with your ex or whether that is with somebody who is aligned with the kind of life and partner and relationship that you do want. But this is only going to happen if you learn and grow from this experience and start making some insightful choices right now. Now, again, you may be kind of sitting back and saying like, okay, what are the odds that I'm going to end up in this camp or that camp or this other outcome or something like that? And I don't want you to think that way because I want you to have a flexible growth mindset as the result of this. I don't want you to have a fixed static mindset that says, okay, you know, hey, I, I, there's nothing I can do about my situation. So let me just see what the odds are. And if they're in my favor, I'll feel good. And if they're not, then I'll feel bad. Like, don't, look at it that way. Look at it as a powerful opportunity to say, okay, what can I do to position myself to have a great outcome from all of this? And that is something that obviously we want to help you out here with on this channel. Specifically, if you do want to know what our thoughts and opinions are about your relationship and what might need to happen in order for you to save your relationship, then what I'd really recommend you do is head on over to modernlove.life slash quiz. There's going to be a link for that down below in the description box as well too, but head over there and fill out a short assessment. It shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes tops. Just give us some background information about your relationship, you know, like how long you were together, when was the breakup, all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, our system will generate some results. It'll say, hey, this is this is kind of what we're thinking in terms of what needs to happen for you to save your relationship. This is how, you know, we see it as maybe likely or unlikely. And th this is what the next action steps might be. Anyway, you can go ahead and find that over at modernlove.life slash quiz. It's right down below as well, too. But uh, yeah, these are the five end games that I can see as the the outcome of your breakup. Which one do you feel like you are living out right now? And what is it that you need to do in order to get on the track to have one of the better outcomes that you do want? Go ahead and share your opinions down below. And once again, hit the thumbs up button for this YouTube video. Thanks again. Take care. And I'll talk to you next time.